So this is the last of the three videos on doors and in this one what I want to have a look at is what we call a panelled door. Now the number of panels uh, is dependent on what you actually want. This is a, a three panel door. You could quite easily have two um, up to you know countless 12, 16 I guess. They'll be getting pretty small by then. But you can have any, any sort of number of panels that you actually want. But there's a few different um, members that go in to make them up. I'm going to have a look at, and a few different ways you can actually finish the panels. A few different types of panels you can have. So we'll start with the two side members, and these are referred to as styles in all cases. And the bottom piece of timber is referred to as a rail. So quite often you'll hear these referred to as a style rail and style door as well, same reason. So bottom rail, top rail for obvious reasons, and in the middle you can have a middle or also known as a lock rail because that's where the lock's going to go. So you notice that the different sizes, the top rail is generally smaller than the mid rail and definitely smaller and the bottom rail. The bottom rail is normally the widest uh, and it's to do with the fact that um, when you're actually looking at the door you're closer to the top rail than you are to the bottom rail. So if they were the same size the door would actually look funny because um, they just look out of proportion so generally the bottom rail is bigger than the top rail. Uh, and the lock rail is bigger because you need to get a lock in there as well. And it can be anywhere, whatever height you want. Um, now, depending on where the actual um, panels you want are and where you want to have your lock as well, you'll see later on it will move down. And the piece of timber in the middle here dividing our two lower panels is what they call a munton. Right, so this door only has one munton. Uh, you'll see later on we're going to have a few more. Um, you can build these doors yourself, although you would need to have a um, a reasonable set of router bits, a rail and style set of router bits that are big enough for, for a full size door. But generally if you're going to get these built you'd get them done by a joinery shop. Uh, and then in the middle you can have panels. Now these could be glass, they could be uh, anything you want, but generally uh, they're a similar timber to the door. And this is what they call a sunken panel because it's not finished the same level as the door, it's actually a little bit below the level of the door and it just gets uh, cut into uh, rebates that are in the edges of the door. So the way we normally finish that is we throw some moulding around the actual door and this is what they call a bolection mould. Bolection mould. What bol uh, bolection mould does is that it actually starts on the actual panel and it comes out over the edge of the style and the rail and finishes out there so it's actually covering both and it's actually cut to come up the step and cover that step so that's a bolection mould. On the other side here we've still got our sunken panel but this time we've just used a beading to finish off the panel so it's just um, th wide enough or thick enough to come from the actual panel to flush with the style on the rail. So it's just a beading. Right, we've still got our, our normal parts on our three panel door. We're going to have a look at a four panel door. Uh, most things are the same except this time we have an upper and a lower mountain and our lock style, or lock rail I should say has actually moved down a bit. So we've got an upper and a lower mountain. And this one I've drawn in raised panels. So these are again generally timber that are moulded so this uh, this edge is thin enough to fit into the groove that's moulded into the rail on the style but it's raised so that it's at least level with the style on the rail or in some cases it actually comes a little bit past or higher than the style on the rail. So it's a raised panel 
and you can get lots of different styles of those depending on the route a bit and on the other side here you can see there's a different um, profile there on the actual panel but same thing thinner here so it raises up and um, comes at least level with the uh, rail and the style uh, so this is a five panel door and now we have two horizontal rails so this one's still our lock rail but this one here we call a freeze rail and everything above it is obviously what we call the freeze so we have a freeze mountain and we have um, freeze panels now again these can be the same setup, set up. they could be a sunken panel they could be a raised panel or in this case I've drawn them in as a flush panel so they finish flush with the, the rail and the style uh, so they actually have to, the little step has to be cut into the panel to allow it to finish flush normally there would be a bit of a gap there because uh, you know, unless you're spot on never getting into that 100% and to cover the gap there's a raised, what we call a raised moulding uh, find the name here somewhere, there we go, raised mould so it just sits so it covers the join between the flush panel and the rail and the style and the other side same thing so just a raised raised moulding on there so it's different to the Belection mould because it doesn't actually come up the step it's just laid on a flat surface so there we go there's the main parts of our door remember we've got our styles our top and bottom rail we're going to have a lock rail in there as well our muntins run out the middle and anything in this top core of the door above our second horizontal member is a part of our freeze so freeze rail, freeze mountain and freeze panels and remember the three different types of panels and the associated mouldings that go with them so that's it, that's our panelled door